Yes, sir. Well, I have seen that the free trade ideal has remained mostly an ideal we are striving for. We have seen that in continental Europe, they are leaving it aside every time some of their economic advantages are involved. I'm very concerned with what happens to the farmer here in Kansas. I've been a long time resident, and I've been thinking the following. Last year, we exported a lot of grain. It went to Europe, and I think two-thirds went to Russia, to, to the Soviets. Now, what happened in those countries, in the purchasing countries, they had to pay in their currency about 15% less than what they paid a year before. This was due to the dollar devaluation. By that situation, I figure that the Russians have received a bonus of maybe a billion and a half dollars, which inflation has paid for, in other words, the American taxpayer. So what would you think, Dr. Friedman, if somebody came up with an innovation, with an idea to establish an offset, an equalization for this bonus of the dollar devaluation to people that buy in Rotterdam, to people that buy in Russia? I think it I would be a very bad idea. I would say, Dr. Friedman, it would require no bureaucracy whatsoever. It would be handled by the bank that receives the payment drafts, and then this money could genuinely be given to the farmer out of whose hide it was taken in the first place. It was not taken out of the hide of the farmer. I beg your pardon. A market is a market. You know, I did not hear any complaints from farmers at the no, time that farm prices were abnormally high. Did you? What is this? Are we going to have a game of heads I win, tails you lose? Yeah, agriculture is an, is an industry like every other industry. The farmer is an entrepreneur and a businessman. He is in a business which has a characteristic feature of having a fluctuating income. Obviously, in going into that business, he takes into account the fact that some years his income will be high and some years his income will be low. I do not believe it is true, as you say, that anything has been taken out of the hide of the farmer. On the contrary, if we take the experience of the United States over the past 20 years, we have had enormous governmental subsidies to the farmer. Now, the farmer hasn't benefited from that. Let me go slowly. You see, the problem with all of these things like you're describing is that they never have the results that the well-intentioned people who propose them intend to have. What is the effect of spending a lot of money trying to help the farmer? The effect of it is, first of all, to encourage more people to be farmers than otherwise would. Second of all, to make costs of producing agricultural products higher than they otherwise would be, because the counterpart of this is that you take uh, uh, you take land out of cultivation. It has a lot of side effects which eat up a large fraction of the gain, but that doesn't reduce the cost to the taxpayer. The taxpayer has paid twice. He has paid in the form of higher prices for his food than he need have paid, and he has paid second in the form of the taxes. Now, so far as the Russian case is concerned, I believe you have to be very careful here. I think we should allow the Russians freely to buy all the agricultural products they want, provided they pay for it with their own money, out of their own pockets, and we don't subsidize them. The real problem with the Russian purchases is that in large part it has been subsidized by loans from Western countries. Insofar as those loans are made by private people, that's their business. They're risking their money. Insofar, however, as they have been government guaranteed, as they often have, I am opposed to that. I do not believe that we ought to guarantee loans to the Russians. But then I think we ought to say, okay, if the Russians want to buy wheat, fine. So far as the common market is concerned, they have engaged in agricultural protectionism on a, on a, a large scale, as you say. 
they are making a mistake to doing that. They are already suffering by paying a higher price for their agricultural products than they need to. We ought to encourage them to reduce their barriers, of course, on trade. But I think, you know, how many times have you and I heard the story that here is a particular government reform which will not require a bureaucracy? I'm sorry, sir, there is no such animal. I stand corrected with pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.